What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. Today we're going to be chatting with Kyle from Hot Shot Secrets. He's been on the podcast before talking about fuel lubricity and other products that they make to keep our trucks running as best as they can, as long as they can. And today we wanted to talk to him about things we can do to pick up some fuel economy. We know that there's a, a huge uh, you know, crunch at the pump and prices are all over the place and it's costing us a lot, not just to commute, but uh, to get to job sites, to get products to us, transportation, everything's just just going up. So we wanted to ask him how much can we really get as far as fuel improvement, fuel economy improvements, you know, with our trucks by training the fuel and even the engine oil. And so today he's going to chat with us about that. Before we get to it, though, I want to encourage you guys. We need your help to get us to 500 subscribers on our Discord server. You're going to see a link on the screen and or a, a code on the screen, and also a link down below. There's a ton of great information, some really cool builds you guys have just recently posted up of some restorations on a second-gen Cummins. Um, there's going to be a, an LB7 or LLY swap into an older GM truck, lots of uh, show suggestions. So it's a great way to interact with us, ask questions, show off your build, um, and be able to network with other diesel podcast listeners, ask them questions. We even have a marketplace on there, so make sure you head on over. If you're also looking for a way to be able to be even more involved with the Diesel Podcast, there's a Patreon link down below where you're going to find exclusive perks, um, see clips and episodes that we don't release anywhere else. We have our guests answer questions, be able to message us, be an executive producer for an episode. Lots of great ways to be able to help us grow, help us uh, continue to bring you guys cutting edge you know, information and content as it pertains to your diesels. All right, let's get to today's episode with Kyle from Hot Shot Secrets and learning more about how do we get better fuel economy. Kyle, welcome back to the Diesel Podcast. I always enjoy our chats and learning more about uh, fuel treatment, oil treatment, lots of cool things you guys have uh, have going on at Hot Shot Secrets. So today should be uh, really fun to chat about how to get more fuel economy out of our truck. So welcome back. Well, thanks, Patrick. <laughs> always good being with you and uh, looking forward to another chat with you. We always have a good time. Yeah, it's fuel fuel topics or fuel efficiency. You're just trying to get you know more out of our vehicles has been a major thing so far in the 2022 with prices all over the place and uncertainty there. And I don't know a ton about that. Um, so I'm really going to be uh, kind of a beginner or a novice here <laughs> today asking you questions to say, you know, say um, I, I, I want to get more fuel economy out of my, whether it's Cummins, Duramax, Power Stroke. What can I do either with, you know, the fuel side, even the, you know, the oil side to be able to, you know, kind of help my, my wallet not take such a beating. Yeah, we are taking a beating right now, aren't we? I know yeah. I just, I think I just filled up with 524 a gallon and that's painful. Oh yeah. And, uh, but you know, there's, there's some ways to obviously, uh, cut down on that and get some of, uh, your investment into that fuel now, um, really stretch it out as far as we can. And, uh, you know, in our world, in the lubricant world, uh, this is actually one of those times where people are turning and looking yeah. and listening to us for once, you know, and I, I think, uh, the gains are always there. The, the, you know, having a good fuel treatment is, is always a good thing to have, but it certainly comes when these prices go up that two things happen. Either one, somebody says, I'm already spending enough on my fuel. I can't imagine, you know, spending anything else to, to treat the fuel. Uh, but with a little education on that, we, we can actually show you how, uh, it pays for itself. You know, the, the higher the fuel gets in cost, the easier it is to pay off uh, an additive in, the, in that fuel, which can help quite a bit. So, uh, so yeah, I think, I think the first thing that we always try to look at is the fuel itself. And I know, Patrick, you and I have talked before about how poor the, the diesel fuel is and, yeah. and that we're getting out of the pump. And um, uh, one of the first components we look at is cetane. The level of cetane in, in, in the diesel fuel. Uh, there's a the federal regulation is a 40 cetane mini, minimum. Um, now that varies by state. Some states have higher. Like I know California, I believe, has a 50 cetane mini, minimum. So they're getting some good, good high cetane fuel out there. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it's it's a 40 minimum, and the fuel jobbers, the 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 the, the stations, they do not care to go an inch past that. You know they're they live in a world of a uh, fraction of pennies in cost of additive that they put in their fuel, just enough to make the claim at the pump that, you know, we've added a great injector cleaner. It's like, well, there might be a drop in there so they can say it. And uh, as far as cetane, they're going to give a, get up to that government minimum and stop. There's no interest to go past that. So 
one of the one of the best things you can do, especially if you're looking to pick up some MPG, is to get the highest cetane fuel you can get. Um, fuel testing is very expensive and it's tough to do. And like we've often shared in the past, uh, uh, fuel varies day to day. Uh, location to location, even the same pump can get you a different fuel the next day. So it's very hard to count on a reliable source of fuel. And we've seen that with our testing. It's just all over the map. So uh, it's just very hard to count on a good, good quality fuel. So the best thing you can do is treat your fuel uh, and bring that cetane level up um, as much as you can. Uh, now, what we're, what we're doing with the cetane and the fuel uh, a lot of people are used to seeing on the gas side of the world, they're always used to seeing at the fuel pump there, the 87 octane and the 91 of the premium octane and so forth. Cetane is the exact opposite of octane on the diesel side. So we, we want to, most of these engines really operate best in the mm, 46 to 50 plus cetane. Uh, that's how they're built. That's what they really want and made for. They rarely see that because of the poor fuel we get but you have the ability to add cetane to the fuel. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of companies out there like ours that make products that bring that cetane level up. And uh, what happens when you have a higher level cetane is you're getting a more complete burn of the fuel. That's the most important part to it. So uh, there's a lot of spent fuel that comes out. Um, when you see black smoke, black smoke is dollar bills going out your tailpipe. You know, that is expended wasted fuel that was not used to power that vehicle and it passes through and right out that tailpipe. So uh, especially now, right now with the fuel prices so high, uh, black smoke is pretty expensive. So we want to use all of that fuel uh, to power the vehicle. So bringing the level of cetane up, most importantly, fully burns the fuel. You're going to get every drop of that fuel burnt the higher the cetane level is. So there's no wasted fuel. That alone get you more of that fuel per per tank which means you're going to go farther on that same fill up so that's the that's the most important thing out of the gate to, to really establish is to make sure that you've got a very good cetane level in the fuel and what kind of <clears throat> what kind of improvements can people see by getting the the cetane rating up into that range that you mentioned is it something um you know that is how would how would somebody you know judge it and say okay I I use this uh, this product at cetane up I got you know X amount you know more miles out of this tank than than before because I know a lot of people are that they're focusing on tons of different aspects to their trucks with efficiency um, you know the fuel the oil also you know with tire size other things that are going on with the truck to just try to save a little money because like you mentioned it's it's almost out of control and it's affecting everything not just our daily drivers but you know shipping products um oh yeah hot shotting towing just every single thing yeah yeah exactly and i i, I believe the it's tough to get the seat of the pants feel out of uh you know having a high cetane fuel and it's uh uh you're not necessarily i i take that back you can get some seat of the pants feel out of it because the cetane also plays a part in in the way you use that power too. So if you're heavy on the on the right foot, uh, there goes your MPGs. But you know, cetane like also likes making power that way as well. Yeah. Uh, here, when we talk about fuel additives, MPG equals horsepower. It's the same thing. It's how you're using it. Are you using it efficiently or not? Um, what we mo what we most importantly want to do is use all of it is make sure that we're completely using all that fuel. I'll give you a good example is, uh, and to answer your question directly, how are you going to see that change? It's really dependent on the fuel you have. So you cannot just keep pouring cetane into fuel. You cannot just all of a sudden say, I want 75 cetane fuel and pour a bottle in. It just, it doesn't work that way. Uh, there's a, there's a gain curve to cetane. Um, I'll tell you an interesting story to, to explain that. Uh, for example, our EDT, which is our everyday diesel treatment product, um, and our diesel extreme, uh, both can raise the cetane level up seven points. So if you have a 40 cetane uh, uh, fuel uh, from the pump, and uh, you could raise that up to a 47. Now, that does not necessarily mean if you've got a 50 cetane fuel that you can go up to 57. 
Uh, the higher it is, the less gain you're going to get based on the chemistry of how cetane is blended into the fuel. Uh, one thing I like to tell everybody also is, uh, and I can speak to Hotshot Secret products in particular, we don't use any fillers. We have 100% additive. They're fully formulated, and we build these products right to the gain curve. Um, some of the competition has, for, for lack of a better term, a uh, more watered down formulas, let's say. So there is an advantage that if a little's good, then a lot must be great. And uh, that does happen a lot with some, some uh, not as potent dosages, let's say. Uh, we always advise people using our product that really to go with the dosages that we put on there because we've actually designed it to be right at that gain curve. Anything past that, hey, it pays our bills around here and you're buying more product than you need, but you're probably probably wasting money. Um, I, I'll give you a, a, a quick cetane example I like to use. We have a, a sponsored racer that uh, uh, Trey Sykes out of North South, South Carolina now. And we used to call it the Trey Sykes dosage because he contacted us and said, hey, I found a really good mix with your EDT fuel additive that just makes the car just really perform great out on the track. And, and I said, all right, well, so what are you, how much are you using? He says, well, I'm putting 40 ounces of EDT on a five gallon fuel cell. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> so now mind you, the do proper dosage of EDT is one ounce per 25 gallons. So on a five gallon cell, the proper dosage would be two tenths of one, one a fifth of an ounce is all, mm -hmm. all he needs. And he was putting 40 ounces on. So it was a 200 times dosage overdose. Um, Usually that call comes in and somebody that screwed up and poured a big bottle in and we're like, oh my gosh, they poured too much in. But rest assured, even with a 200 times overdose, it's fine for the vehicle. Uh, probably the cleanest fuel system in the world with all the cleaner in there. <laughs> but more importantly, he said it was running great. And he really was curious how far the cetane is in it. So we took it in the lab. Um, under our normal dosage, one ounce to 25 gallons will raise the cetane four points. Two ounces to 25 gallons is the performance dosage that will raise at seven points. So that same dosage in a five gallon cell, if you're following, would be about a half ounce. So that half ounce that we tested uh, measured right at a seven point increase. The other 39 and a half ounces that he poured on top of that only moved the cetane two more points. Wow. So it really goes to show that you can keep pouring that in, but it is not going to keep going. That there's there's a limit to it, and uh, that's why we really try to adjust for the gain curve right there, and and make sure the dosages are just right to get you the maximum burn of the fuel without wasting money. That's really good information because it it, it is something that you know as a, a truck owner we think well if the little's good a lot must be great and I can still run it in my fuel system, but you can see how there there's diminishing returns, especially you know if you're using that much, you're not going to get past that 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 gain curve that you mentioned it's, right it's just not there and you know there's some other things in 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 the fuel additives that also contribute to helping out with the mile per gallon so uh obviously uh we you know we have a cetane booster in our fuel additives but a lubricity additive we've talked a lot before you and i in the past about how dry the fuel is and you know the yeah. ultra low sulfur ultra low sulfur diesel fuel uh, so bringing the lubricity level up on that really helps. And, and you, you, we see some results of an upper cylinder lubricant too. So just like we're oiling the, the bottom side of the engine there, um, helping that, that ring on that, that cylinder on that piston, you know, squeegee and glide well. Well, the fuel side of that is really dry. So adding lubricity to the top end, which, you know, is often called a top end lube or a top uh, upper cylinder lubricant is lubing the top side to allow that ring to flow better as well. Um, we're reducing the resistance against that. We're allowing the engine to, to flow more freely. So again, we're not inventing the power. We're not inventing the mile per gallons uh, gain there. We're just freeing up the engine to not work so hard. And uh, so, so we're already lubricating the bottom side with the oil adding some lubrication to the top side with the fuel just brings efficiency to the engine to make power easier and thus, you know, save, save money, save, uh, save fuel. That's one of the things that I, I took away from some of our other episodes when we talked about fuel lubricity 
and even fuel quality <clears throat> is just how basic it is out there. And I know, I think you'd mentioned each state's a little different or different regions, you know, have different, uh, um, you know, kind of qualities and just how much you can gain there <clears throat> by just, like you said, just having, m making the engine work less to make, you know, the power exactly. and then using that responsibly, you know, as far as driving and, and, uh, you know, just trying to be a little light on the throttle, being able to, uh, you know, kind of pick up some, some fuel economy there. Yeah. A lot of it's our responsibility too, as the driver, you know? Yeah. So, uh, obviously we know when we're, we're kind of burning that fuel, uh, with our foot. Uh, but if you make a conscious effort and, and take the, take the steps that you do have in your, in, in your control, um, uh, you know, again, with the fuel additives, knock all those out of the park and then try to try to be responsible with the foot. And if you need to have some fun with the right foot every once in a while, so be it, at least you're getting some gain by treating the fuel. Um, and you know, that's not, that's not it either. You've got multiple, you can, you can boost the cetane and we can bring up the lubricity as well. And let's not forget the cleaning of the fuel system. So we're already treating the terrible fuel we get, but let's also take care of our vehicles too. So just, just preventative maintenance uh, with fuel system cleaner. Uh, we've got our diesel extreme, which is our very deep clean. It's got a ton of injector and fuel system cleaner in there. In our everyday treatment, uh, we have a keep clean dose. It's just, just enough to keep everything clean in between those deep cleanings. But whether you're using a fuel additive, which I obviously highly recommend or not, you should at least uh, be periodically doing a deep clean on the system. Because then what happens is the spray pattern of your injectors. Uh, as you get dirt in the system and you start to uh, build up different types of we're seeing nowadays a lot of what we call IDIDs which are internal diesel injector deposits they're they're a byproduct of basically a lot of uh, a lot of fuel passing through different jobbers hands that are adding poor chemicals to them those chemicals tend to react with each other and they leave these deposits that will end up finding their way to the tips of your injectors and the best way to explain it is it's almost like snot. It's like this gummy, sticky uh, leftover deposits. And very few, even fuel conditioning cleaners can get them out. It takes one special chemical, um, which we add to our fuel additives, uh, that can actually clean those IDIDs out. And that gets the tip of your injector nice and clean and free. So the, the spray pattern is very consistent. And again, you're burning all the fuel. As soon as those get clogged up and you start having a misfiring of the spray pattern and the injector, again, you're just wasting fuel. They're still going to be spraying the same amount of fuel. It's not going to be hitting the right uh, you know, spot on the piston. And you're, you're not going to get, you're not going to get your full value of all that fuel that you're, you're spitting through those injectors. So keeping that system clean is also very important to, to, to mileage. That's another huge part of this. And I know we're chatting about fuel economy, but also, the way that the market is, is it's not as easy to get new trucks as it used to be. And people are holding onto them longer or they're investing into, you know, making their LB7 or LBZ or, you know, early third gen 6.7 Cummins or, or Power Stroke. Be, <clears throat> keep it in the best operating shape that they can because they, they want it to last. You know, dealer lots, I, I see them, you know, here in, in the Denver area, <clears throat> they're not as packed as they used to be. And, no. and I see on Facebook and Instagram, people looking for trucks and they're, they're, they're struggling to, to find them. So yeah, keeping, keeping what we have running in the best possible condition that we have is also another thing that I hear a lot from listeners. And, um, you know, I see on your guys' Facebook and Instagram, you know, people are commenting, asking about that kind of stuff. So that's, that's great information. Yeah, and, and also, I want to throw one more thing out there I just kind of thought about, too. Uh, a couple of the other components that we add to our fuel additives, generally, we don't speak of from a, a mileage standpoint. Usually, that's the cetane and the lubricity and the cleaning, like I just said. But we also add a, a water dispersant um, and a rust and corrosion inhibitor since we are uh, shocking the fuel to, to bring down all the water uh, for, for your water separator. That actually, you know, I'd argue is an important aspect to mileage as well, because, you know, water in the fuel, it's naturally going to find its way there because we have waxy fuel and the, the different temperatures and so forth. So to make sure that water is not passing through and that you're pushing through clean fuel, you know, full 100% fuel is very important. So you want to make sure you're assisting your water separator by um, using a water dispersant to chuck the water into and, and, and get it out of the fuel. And lastly, uh, we, we, 
add a, a fuel stabilizer to all of our fuels as well. One thing that we've noticed in some of the driving studies that we've had, it started off with the whole pandemic, everything when driving went down considerably, people stopped driving as much. Yeah. Um, same thing happens when the fuel prices go up. Now we kind of got the double whammy right now. So we're seeing people that are making conscious decisions of not driving as much. They're trying to limit, you know, uh, their driving. And what that means is they're consuming their fuel in a shorter amount or in a longer amount of time. And it's really important to have a stabilizer in there uh, because especially diesel fuel, people don't really understand that it, it oxidizes pretty quickly. And in as quick as 30 days, that fuel starts to oxidize. Well, from the time we were at the refinery to the time it gets to the pump, it's usually been 30 days. So by the time it goes in the ground there, it's already starting to oxidize. Now you're putting it in your tank. And if you're trying to, you know, if you're someone that used to fill up every single week that may be filling up every other week because you're cutting down your driving, well, you, now you're just extending how long that fuel is, um, is being used. As it oxidizes, the C chain starts to lower, uh, you start to you start to lose the the advantages of a fresh fuel. So, again, a stabilizer, something that we don't really think of from a mile per gallon standpoint, actually really comes into play, especially as you start reducing your your driving time. That is an excellent point, and I've noticed uh, just driving around, um, you know, rush hour it's not quite as packed as it was before. In the weekends, traffic isn't quite as much, and I know. I have friends that have, you know, they park their, their diesel truck and they're driving, you know, a commuter vehicle yeah. to try to save. And it sits for three weeks, a month. They might take it out every now and then. But I, I didn't really think of that side of it. That's, that's an excellent point that, uh, that, you know, that we need to factor in. And, um, you know, I've, I've seen it a lot with with our listeners. They'll say, hey, I'm, I'm not driving my truck as much because diesel fuel is out of control. But we don't think, well, what am I going to do to keep the fuel in good condition while it's sitting in my driveway or in my garage? Yeah, certainly need certainly need something to stabilize that fuel. It, it it goes bad quickly. And also, if you are going to have a vehicle sit, we always recommend, if and when all possible, top off that tank too. Uh, the more air we have in the tank opens you up for, especially this time of year as the seasons change, uh, you're just promoting more uh, condensation inside, moisture buildup. So as it sits there, your fuel's falling out of grade and it's adding with water. So once you finally go to drive it, you know, and the few, the little you are driving it, now you really want to enjoy it. Um, so a good stabilizer will hold that fuel. And uh, uh, I mean, our stabilizer will stabilize the tank of fuel for almost a year. So you're good, you know, just one treatment is, and it's good, but you're just not getting that treated from the refinery or the, the fuel jobbers. They have no interest in adding that stabilizer to the fuel. So make sure you're doing something if you've really cut back on your driving. I'm definitely going to link this uh, this podcast episode to some of my friends that have their trucks just sitting in their garages and yeah. uh, didn't think about this. But, you know, I, I naturally in this topic, you know, the first thing I think about is fuel and and what you know I can do to be able to to uh, help it or, or get the efficiency up. But then the next is I start to think about the engine oil. And mm -hmm. uh, our last episode, um, there's a lot of people that, that tuned into that, had a lot of questions. Um, and I know they're going to be asking, well, is there anything I can do on the, the oil side to be able to help with that efficiency? And so I wanted to ask you about that portion of this fuel economy equation. Absolutely. And, and that the oil side often gets forgotten when we're talking about efficiency and MPGs. But in short, we're always just trying to minimize the use of the fuel we're trying to maximize the efficiency of the engine the performance of the engine so as i always say we don't invent horsepower here we don't invent the mpgs we're freeing up the engine to perform at its full peak potential so um uh, our fr3 which is one of our our main oil additives, uh, we, we blend this FR3 into every one of our oils, every one of our engine oils, transmission oils, um, gear oils, you name it. Every single oil that we put out here has our FR3 in it. It's, it's a nanocarbon um, nanotechnology. I think we've dove in it in the past before. Uh, so without diving into the product itself, what we're actually doing is lubricating that oil to a very extreme level. So uh, our FR3 will reduce wear by 42% added to any host oil. Um, that was tested on uh, Delvac and Rotella is generally what uh, we do our base testing on. So 
what we're doing is by reducing wear, reducing the friction, you're reducing the amount of power that the engine needs to operate itself. In short, we're trying to get rid of any parasitic loss um, and allow the engine to really, really fire on all cylinders, as they say. I'll give you a perfect example, uh, a story that I like to tell from my buddy Johnny Gilbert at Stainless Diesel. He, uh, it's, this was completely by accident, and he told me this story about they had the, the race truck on the dyno logging, logging on the dyno. They don't even know if they were aware that it was logging at the time. And they, uh, uh, this is years ago before he even ran our racing oil and he was testing our FR3 and he literally poured it into the truck on the dyno while it was running, um, at idle and they did their polls and they did their day and, you know, and moved on. Well, they went back and looked at the data and after the pour in of the nano lubricant into the oil, and this was a good quality racing oil that he was using at the time. Um, they, they have different parameters that they keep a very close eye on. And one of them is cubes of fuel. It measures exactly the volume of fuel that the truck is needing to push through the, the injectors to maintain an RPM level. Well, adding the nano lubricant to the oil, they could literally watch them. I've seen the data from the dyno chart. They literally watch the cubes of fuel drop. Now your idle stays the same. It's holding, I don't know what it was idling at, but you know, it's in, you know, the computer is going to hold its idle. So the truck just all, all it knows is I want to stay at this idle level. Yeah. Um, nothing on the throttle and just managing the idle level, the amount of fuel consumption dropped considerably with the nano lubricant. So what that's telling us is it requires less fuel for that engine to produce the same amount of power. Um, usually that's looked at backwards and it says, oh, we're adding this much more power, but it's an interesting way to look at it when you're saying, no, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not measuring at the top end how much horsepower we're making and the difference here. I want to know how much fuel does this truck need to hold 800 RPM or something. Yeah. And to, to watch the addition of a nano lubricant into the oil, which all that's doing is freeing up resistance in the engine. Um, a, you know, a, a, a friction reducer is what it is. So it's just freeing it up and all that parasitic loss that you're getting in the engine from the lack of lubrication uh, is, is what's making the engine work a little harder to hold that RPM level. So by really super lubricating your oil, freeing up the engine to, to work more efficiently, all of a sudden you're using less fuel to maintain the same amount of power. And that is money in your pocket. Yeah, and that's where you know most of the daily driving is done. You know, at a, a, a certain throttle position or less. So we're not necessarily focused on, like you mentioned, that you know wide open throttle run. You know, on a dyno or at the track, they you know we're, we're trying to hold a specific RPM on the highway or around town or, or you know getting a trailer moving. So that's uh, that makes a lot of sense as far as connecting the dots on this. And that's why when we were going to chat about. Uh, you know, fuel economy day, I'm like, I don't know where to start. Like, I, I know obviously the fuel plays a part in it, but I forgot about the engine oils and that's why, <laughs> you know. Just, well, and that translates too. It's not yeah. just the engine oil. I mean, even to your trans fluid, to your gear oil, anything that is a a lubricating aspect. And now there is a, there's a pretty big amount of parasitic loss in the transmission. Gears are arguable. I always recommend people go with a really heavy gear oil just because I want to err on the side of protection. Um, you know, over that performance side, because there's just not that big of a difference than gear. Oil. But, but both trans and gear, if we can make that stuff run more efficiently yeah, and take less of that, instead of using up the power to really push that transmission through its gears and, and, and push the, the, the gearbox, you know, to, to, to actually, you know, roll, it's just, uh, we're freeing all that up just to run more smoothly. And therefore, essentially, you have less fuel being used to power it all. Yeah, the, the transmission side, I was, when you mentioned that, I'm thinking of all the parts that move in there, um, and the clutch packs and, and uh, planetary gears and uh, all the parts in the converter and everything like that. And I imagine there's, there's some gains to be had there with, you know, with, with the lubricity and, and just making um, and the transmission and all the components just have to work maybe a little bit less to be right. able to, to do what we're doing. So there's, there's definitely there's a lot of room for improvement. I guess that's what I'm learning um, in, in chatting with you, different parts of a, a vehicle that, uh, you know, that we can look to, to improve it. And I, I was thinking of something else. This came up from a listener. You know, I think he was asking about uh, 
about uh, one of our other episodes when we were talking about lubricity and CP4s. And he said, hey, I've got a bunch of trucks with my construction company. They're not diesels, they're gas. Does What does Hotshot Secret have for maybe some of the other vehicles that are in my fleet? Or maybe I want you know to do this in, in, in something else. Do you guys have other products for um, you know, gasoline vehicles and, and just other, other things people can do with, um, you know, trucks or cars that they might have. Sure. Absolutely. And, uh, matter of fact, pretty much all of our oil side additives are good in gas or diesel, you know, uh, uh the complement to our FR3 on the oil side is our stiction eliminator, which the diesel world knows very well from the six liter, the seven, three Huey injectors, which that was designed to be an oil side cleaner for the fuel injector. Um, <laughs> it drives me nuts because I always try to tell the rest of the diesel world, hey, this product's good for you as well, but it's great for gas too. Um, it's great for lawnmowers. If it's an engine, these oil oil, oil side uh, additives are great. It does, they don't care if it's a gas or diesel engine. Um, those those you can treat anything with. Now, obviously on the fuel side, um, it's, it's specific gas or diesel, but we do have uh, gas products uh, to complement. I'll give you a good example of um, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you some gas MPG stuff here on the diesel podcast. Um, <laughs> we have a complimentary product called gasoline extreme. It's similar to our diesel extreme on the gas world though. Gasoline is a more highly refined product than is diesel. So it's something that not necessarily needs as much treatment in every single tank. However, you still build up the carbon in inside the engine, just like you do in a diesel environment. It gets attracted to the hot spots, the tightest tolerances, the injectors and so forth. So uh, we have a product called Gasoline Extreme. It's designed like Diesel Extreme, designed to be used every six to 10,000 miles. Uh, you put it in one, one tank, it's a one tank cleanser and it flushes everything from the tank, to the lines, to the rails, to the injectors and cleans everything out. Now, the difference between that and the diesel side of things is that as we talked earlier, you can get gains on the diesel side by improving the cetane, improving the lubricity, you know, as, as we talked on the gas side, we're really, you can't make the gasoline too much better to get much more power or MPG out of it. But what you can do is clean your system. Um, when we first released the gasoline extreme, we did a, a thousand vehicle test. We put a couple formulas out there and tested on a thousand vehicles. And the interesting thing is what we saw was obviously, I mean, you could, it was almost like a straight line. The older the vehicle, the more mile per gallon they picked up. Um, and that's simply because the dirtier the system, yeah. the more you're going to gain. So if you're to take our gasoline extreme product and you buy a brand new vehicle and pour it in there, you're probably not going to see little to no gain to it because there's just nothing to clean out. It's just a little bit different than the diesel side. However, uh, there, you know, you've got five, 10,000 miles on it or 200,000 miles on it. It is time to clean it out and you will see, your MPG, I believe we averaged an 8% mile per gallon gain on our ga gasoline extreme, which was more than the diesel side, but it just goes to show that the gasoline side doesn't really treat their fuel as much as the diesel people are used yeah. to do. So. Yeah. I never, I never really hear many conversations specifically about that. That's what caught me, uh, caught my attention when that listener had said, Hey, I got these other trucks I use for construction. What can I, you know, are there products out there I can use for those in addition to, I think you had a power stroke. Um, but uh, you know, all these things are, are, are such really fascinating topics, you know, to kind of get into is it something that, you know, I can do tomorrow. I can uh, you know put it in my tank next to oil change. I can use um, this product and it, it I can kind of be proactive with it. And, right. and, and I think it gives us a little bit of uh, we feel like we have a little bit of control um, over. Well, and I will say this is the time for, people to try it too. those that maybe yeah. aren't into an additive but are also feeling the, the pinch right now this this mile per gallon thing um this is the time to do it like, I, I wish i had my math board you know up with me but but let's put this into some simple you know mathematic equation here if we're paying five dollars a gallon of fuel and and let's see so edt this costs I don't know, roughly about $20 for a 16 ounce bottle. Um, if you're going to treat, um, you know, 25 gallons of fuel, that's an ounce of it. That ounce of product is going to cost you what about a dollar, a dollar 10. Well, if we can get a 3% increase in mile per gallon, you just now have, have just got, that would be 
five times three, 15 cents per gallon you're gaining on the mileage. The treatment itself only cost a dollar ten. So as long as you put 10 gallons in, you broke even on that, that payment. Anything over 10 gallons, you're filling up your tank, 20, 30, 40 gallons. This product now pays for itself and puts money in your pocket. Now, it's hard for people to grasp that, but it's a lot easier to do it right now when fuel's $5 a gallon because it costs so much. Yeah. Um, our price of our product hasn't gone up that much as much, much as the, the fuel prices has doubled. So it essentially is a free product. Matter of fact, we're starting a, a promo this summer. You might, might see it. It's called, we're going to call it the EDT challenge. And we're challenging people to try our product and see if it's actually free for them and to compute their mileage, see what their mileage gain is. And generally speaking, we'll see a three to 5% increase. Generally at these prices, you only need a one to 2% increase in mile per gallon and the product pays for itself. And you get all the other advantages of the injector cleaner and the stabilizer and the water dispersant. So it's like, if I can give you a free product to use that helps you, uh, and by free, I mean it pays for itself in the mile per gallon savings. Um, why not? Why not? So we're really encouraging people that may have never tried it, that pull a $20 bill out, try the product, and I guarantee you're going to get $20, $20 back in fuel mileage. Well, and all these trucks have bigger than 10 gallon fuel tanks and a lot of them have auxiliary ones and, and you know, some of the really aftermarket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it's really important because it, it's so uncertain out there what the, the price of fuel is going to do. It's just, it's a very dynamic situation and it doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. So anything that we can do to, to, uh, to help, uh, you know, make it a little less painful when we stop at the fuel station to, to fuel up. But uh, now if any of our listeners, they want to you know, check out the products that you mentioned um, or other ones, you know, th that, uh, that you guys have, where's the best place to get information or reach out to you guys and ask questions. Hotshotsecret.com. Uh, you can uh, go to our website or social media pages. You know, uh, we're on this hotshot secret on Facebook and Instagram and, and the rest. Uh, we really encourage people to call us directly. Um, I don't remember our 800 number. Our local is 419-947-2647. Uh, we're happy to take your calls. And, you know, even if it's not about our products, if it's something about lubrication that we can help with, if you have some questions about mile per gallon and fuel mileage, and if it's your first diesel, we love first timers, you know, because you come into this diesel world, as you get a lot of listeners, I know that are researching their first diesel purchase. So um, we can help you out with that, you know, and, and, and really kind of educate you. And then on the other side of our business is our dealer network. We have an awesome dealer network of independent dealers out there, diesel performance shops, a lot that have been on your show that, that are, are dealers of our product. They're, they're really the, the um, I guess, influencers, if you will. They're the educated uh, guys that are turning wrenches, that know these things inside and out and have seen the product work and speak to it very well. Um, and to kind of bring it back to your, your listener who's asking about the multiple dis different types of trucks as well. I, we have great fleet uh, packages too. So if you've got a fleet of vehicles, um, which the average fleet in America is three trucks. People think a fleet means hundreds and hundreds of trucks. We've got tons of three, three truck fleets that do business with us. Um, you know, lawn care business, or, um, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that are using diesels for this, but they're also using gasoline trucks too. So yeah. uh, with a fleet account with us, you can buy the products for both sides. You know, maybe you're already buying our products at a retail outlet or something and, um, and didn't know we had gasoline products. Hey, there's, there's a way to, uh, cover all the vehicles in your fleet and, uh, really get them up to tip top shape, make sure they're running because that's, you know, a lot of times how we're making our money. Those are our, those are our horses right there. So a lot, you got to take care of them. Yeah. There's, I can attest to, to how awesome you guys are with answering questions. Like when we do an episode, we'll see a bunch of YouTube comments and you guys jump in and answer them. Um, or anytime I've ever, you know, sent somebody over to you, they're always like, those guys are awesome to chat with. They, they answered all my questions. So I know they appreciate it. We do as well. And, uh, I appreciate you educating me, you know, on, on things that, that I can do with, with, uh, in my truck or really any vehicle that I have to be able to, you know, kind of weather this, this fuel price storm that's that's going on and it's always always great to chat with you kyle and i appreciate your time thanks patrick always good to be on with you appreciate it
Don't forget, Diesel fans, make sure and head on over to our Discord server. There's a link down below. It's totally free to join. I want to see you guys on there. We're super close to 500 uh, members on there. That's That's been our goal is to be able to reach that number. I love uh, to interact with you guys, answer your questions, be able to get guests on the show that you want to hear from. So make sure you head on over there and join if you haven't already. Also, I want to give a shout out to a couple of our Patreon sponsors, Texas Diesel Supply, Rights Diesel Services, and Caleb. There's a, a lot of support that uh, you know we get from you guys. You guys are what keep us going, what drive the podcast. This is why we do the podcast, is for all of you who listen every week and to be able to help you guys make educated decisions when you're purchasing parts. If you're starting a shop or looking to grow your shop, be able to get experts on to be able to answer you know those, those type of business questions and companies as well to talk about their products in a more detailed way than we see on social media or any other platforms out there. It's really cool to be able to connect the companies, to the shop owners, to you guys out there that are driving your trucks every day. Until next time, keep the shiny side up.